lesson I'm going to be talking about some of the central themes of economics as a social science. At this point in the course you've already learned some of the basic models that economists use such as the production possibilities curve, the circular flow model, and maybe some others to represent what is going on in the interactions between buyers and sellers and in the choices that society faces in its use of its scarce resources. As you move forward in your study of economics, it's important to identify and discuss some of the major themes that you might be learning about in your class. The first I want to talk about is the distinction between what we call positive and normative economic statements. Positive economics is that which explores the realm of facts. In other words, when making a positive economic statement, an economist is talking about what is in the economy. For example, we've got a graph here that shows that the United States unemployment rate remained stable for many years in the early 2000s and then increased in 2007 through 2009 and then decreased from 2009 until 2015. This is a fact. There is data to support this. It is not a statement of opinion. Rather, it is a positive economic statement. However, much of what economists do is offer what we call normative analysis. So whereas Observation of facts is known as positive economics. An example of a normative economic statement or analysis might be the statement that the government should do more to reduce unemployment for people leaving college with high levels of education. So a normative statement is a statement of opinion or what should be. So an important distinction before moving forward in your study of economics is that some of what we do in economics is observation of positive economic facts, observations of what actually is in the world around us, whereas some of our responsibilities as economists lies in the realm of normative economics. The difference is that positive economics deals with facts and what is actually true about the economy, whereas normative economics deals with what should be true about the economy and involves the expression of an economist's opinions. Throughout all the units of study in your exploration of economics, you will be examining both positive economic relationships and normative economic statements. And it's important to know the distinction between those two before you move on in your course. I'm going to move on to another central theme of economics. And that is the distinction between economic growth and economic development. I've chosen here two images, one representing growth. Economic growth is simply defined as an increase in the incomes of people over time, or an increase in the output of society over time. It's almost universally agreed among economists that growth is good. However, there is an important distinction here, because not all growth leads to economic development. Economic development has a much broader definition among most economists than economic growth. Whereas growth can be quantified by an increase in a nation's GDP over time, economic development is something that is a little bit more nebulous. It involves improvements in human welfare. Human welfare, which of course income may improve human welfare, but there are other factors as well, such as health education, and human rights. Economists explores both of these very important areas of study, and there is a distinction between the two. Throughout our study of economics, we will be distinguishing between what is good for the economy from an economic growth perspective and what is good for society from an economic development perspective. It's important to keep in mind that both of these are important objectives in our study of economics, but many economists believe that growth is actually a means to development. And ultimately, it's an improvement in human welfare through health, education, human rights, longer lives, happier lives that really matters. And it's important to keep that end in mind as we continue our study of economics. The next major theme I want to introduce today is the threat to environmental sustainability. You probably learned early on in your course that economics is all about 
the study of how society allocates its scarce resources and puts them to use efficiently to achieve economic growth. We can see here that over the last thousand years, the average income of humans on the planet has increased dramatically. This is undoubtedly a good thing. For thousands of years of human history, poverty was pretty much the expected standard of living. Whereas today, prosperity is being enjoyed by more and more people on the planet in different countries that are experiencing rapid economic growth. However, what threat does this pose to the planet itself? The threat is that the growth that we have enjoyed over the last thousand years is unsustainable. Unsustainable. Now, what does sustainability mean? My favorite definition of sustainability is the ability to continue or endure indefinitely. Sustainability is really what's necessary in order for human society to exist on the planet for another thousand years. Now look at this line again. Is this rate of economic growth, this rate of increase in income, all which requires the production and consumption of goods that require non-renewable resources. Is this sustainable or is there a level of income at which humans will eventually plateau and if it contributes to destruction of our natural environment possibly experience a fall in incomes sometime in the future. This very important consideration is at the core of what we study in economics. The threat to environmental sustainability, the ability for life to endure on the planet indefinitely Many economists and people in other sciences, both physical and social sciences, would argue that the growth that the world has experienced, the increase in prosperity that the world has experienced over the last thousand years has come at the expense of our natural environment and that continued production and consumption at the rates of growth that we have seen is clearly unsustainable and we are on the brink of some imminent environmental collapse. It is the responsibility of economists to measure the costs and the benefits of continued economic growth and develop strategies for promoting growth that can occur in a sustainable manner in a way that allows for life to endure on Earth for another thousand years. Another theme we'll be exploring throughout our study of economics is that of equity versus efficiency. Equity is a very important concept in economics. Equity is what we call fairness. Many would argue that the policies needed to achieve full efficiency in our use of resources, in other words, allow for the economic growth that has brought prosperity to millions of people in both the rich and the developing world, may not be equitable. In other words, fair. And as a result, what we end up with it is inequality. It's obvious that great prosperity has been enjoyed by those at the top in society. However, the policies that sometimes allow for the increase in incomes of the richest in society tend to leave those behind, and we end up with poverty in the world. It could be argued that the existence of poverty and high levels of inequality in society is a failure of the market economy system, and therefore there needs to be some degree of intervention in order to correct that market failure and reduce the level of inequity and inequality in income distribution on the planet today. These questions surrounding the trade-off between equity and efficiency are at the core of what we will study throughout this course. The final theme, and this is really one that ties all the different topics that I've discussed today together, and that is the role of government. To what extent should the economy and the interactions between buyers and sellers unfold in a completely free market. Of course, a completely free market would allow for great levels of growth and prosperity, but generally just among a very few, and at the expense of many other values that we place in society, such as environmental sustainability. So to what extent should government be involved in regulating and guiding the invisible hand of the free market?
This question is at the core of all the units of study in your economics class. In every topic you study in this class, the role of government will be examined, and you will discuss and learn about the extent to which government should intervene in the markets for different goods and services, or at the national economic level, or even at the international level, when it comes to trade between countries. There are many failures that the free market results in that may require government intervention in order to increase the efficiency and the equity of our market economic system. This lesson is introduced and discuss some of the key themes that you'll be studying in your economics course over the next couple of years, including the, the difference between positive and normative economics, statements of fact versus statements of opinion, the distinction between economic growth and economic development, something that leads to an increase in incomes versus the idea of an improvement in human welfare, undoubtedly good, and the idea that growth may just be a means to the end of economic development. We've also introduced the idea of the threat to sustainability, the idea that the last thousand years of growth, which has undoubtedly been good for mankind, may be unsustainable due to the fact that it is unable to endure for another thousand years. This distinction, this idea that growth must be sustainable is at the core of why we study economics and how economic systems can be designed to efficiently allocate resources in a sustainable manner. Next, we introduced and discussed the concept of equity versus efficiency. Policies that promote the efficiency of free markets may result in inequity and inequality, therefore exacerbating the poverty that already exists among billions of people on the planet today. Finally, to tie all these concepts, these key themes together, we introduce the role of government. Throughout our study of economics, you will constantly be examining the extent to which government can improve the efficiency and the equity of the free market system. Mm -hmm.